Welcome to Kentuckiana Real Talk, hosted by Jeremy Ward. If you enjoy the podcast, please subscribe on the podcast provider of your choice and consider subscribing to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel for more expert real estate insights. Now, let's start the show. Good afternoon. It's Jeremy Ward with Ward Realty Services. Today, I'm with the amazing Melissa Mays, Senior Sales Director with Mary Kay. Melissa and I go way back to high school days. I can remember us, you know, attending classes and hanging out in this little four-way stop that was where all the activity happened in our little school, uh, hometown area. Uh, if you blinked, you missed it. Yeah, absolutely. So, anyway, so how's things been going, Melissa? Great, great. Kind of starting to feel like we're getting back to a little bit of normal in many different ways after building a new home and COVID. So, COVID, yeah. I'm I'm referring to everything as BC. You know what <laughs> I mean? Before COVID. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway. So. Yeah. It, I mean, it's the same here. Like, we, I think everybody really adjusted their whole life, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, of course, you were kind of building a home during that time. Oh, yeah. It so fun. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, supplies are hard to get. Prices are going up. And, oh, hey, yeah. let's build a home. Yeah. Why not? But it worked out. It turned out really nice. Tell me a little bit more about it, and I'll give you a little back history. Um, Melissa used us, thankfully, to uh, sell her home, mm -hmm. and it was an amazing place. And she was able to find some property down the road mm -hmm. and purchased it. And her and Don, her husband, um, had this dream of a barn house, a mm -hmm. barn dominium. So I'll let you take it from there. Okay. Well, um, so the property that we bought actually borders the former property. Yep. So when we moved, we did it redneck style. We piled everything up on the back of my husband's flatbed trailer and we <laughs> drove it over. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, we had, we had ridden our side by side on that property. We'd hiked on that property for years. We kind of treated it like it was our own mm -hmm. and we had tried to buy it from the former owners of that subdivision. Right. And so um, they wanted just, Way too much and so they were wanting to sell it as lot prices not as land prices right so anyway um so that it just never happened never happened and we continued our search um honestly when we bought the house that we bought we weren't necessarily w looking for that house but it was a foreclosure mm -hmm. and it was just too good of a deal to pass up you know i mean you know you buy when the market is bad and well uh -huh. anyway i mean it just depends on what end of the deal you're on but so we couldn't pass it up we we loved the home we enjoyed it for about 12 years and then of course we're able to sell it when the market you know was you, booming you made some improvements to that home we Go did on and you really did a lot of work on the exterior we did. And had ba like a basement well, Entry. we added, we made it a walkout. Okay. Um, was really surprised that it wasn't a walkout, but kind of hearing a little bit of the story, you know, there was one builder that had started the build. He went bankrupt, lost it. Another builder picked it up, started finishing it, did finish it, and then he lost it because this was just right after 2008. So mm. it was just bad, bad for them. Um, and, you know, just ended up being a wonderful opportunity for us bring a new construction home and but there was just a few things that you could tell they kind of cheaped out on you yeah. know and kind of cut some corner the first builder that started it he was going gangbusters with everything i mean just the mold, the crown moldings and i mean just everything was high end cabinetry everything was amazing and then the second one he just finished it finished it got her done so um but anyway so yeah we just kind of went in and corrected some of those oddities <laughs> yeah and then we did go ahead and make it a walkout basement it was a daylight basement you know large windows at like you know ground level but we went ahead and dug that out we uh, doubled the size of the deck off the back of the house and dug down my husband is an equipment guy so he dug down underneath of it and actually did concrete and made a, a second garage so Again, we were kind of squeezing, you know, a square peg into a round hole, right. so to speak, by moving in there because we are very outdoorsy people. We have motorcycles. We have side-by-sides. We needed more garage and less house. Right. But again, like I said, you know, it was the opportunity, so we took it. Um, but yeah, so once we, um, it was uh, Kevin Jershmead who ended up buying 
the whole subdivision, the development. Mm -hmm. And so he, um, I knew him from some past Mary Kay dealings. We had leased a building for an office years ago. And so I just, I approached him and I said, Hey, you know, would you be interested in selling some of this property? And he said, make me an offer. And I said, all right. So it wasn't even on the market. Um, so we made him an offer that I thought was fair. He countered not a little too much higher, but just a little bit. We accepted. And so, yeah, so the day that he closed on buying the subdivision, he closed on selling us that piece. So pretty good day. Yeah, he had a really good day. Yeah. <laughs> made good it into profit. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so we had bought the property and then listed our home. And I think it sold in like, you know, less than two weeks. And um, so yeah, then it became go time. So we bought two shipping containers that's right we moved all of our stuff well actually i sold a lot of things everything that i didn't sell that i didn't feel like i needed i donated to our church two truckloads to our church wow for an africa ministry and so um yeah and we still had two 40-foot shipping <laughs> containers full of stuff which we still have on our property one of them is pretty much cleared out, but the other one is still full. So I'm like, okay, this house is already, we're, yeah, we're going to have, we're going to have to have like an estate sale or something. So <laughs> right on. to be continued, we'll <laughs> let you know what the sale is going to be. So anyway, um, but yeah, so we built the barn home because like I said, we wanted less house. We really wanted to simplify. One of my favorite quotes is when you simplify, you simply fly. Oh, yeah, I like and it. so I like just peace and simple and I mean we don't even have pictures hanging in our in our house it's just very peaceful nice and so the view is the artwork so anyway we didn't even realize we were going to have that view there at the barn until we started clearing the property and then it just kind of opened up and it was like wow what a what a blessing so you're most facing aren't you um yeah we have the sunrise every morning and it's just absolutely gorgeous so you know my bedroom looks out and the living room kitchen looks out on that view so yeah it's pretty awesome nice. so but we lived in a camper on that property you painted the camper we did it, it's, we it's did. up to date and, and really nice did you sell it we bought that camper for i think around thirty thousand, and um i kind of added my touches to it and we sold it for 50 so. nice well, we it was the camper. It, it was nice. Like yeah. I, I knew that that was your plan, and I, in back of my mind, I had stayed in a camper for thirty days. I'm going, oh man, that ain't gonna be comfortable. <laughs> of course, you had a nice camper, mm -hmm. and then I was like, Melissa's gotten bored with the decor and the camper because I've seen on Facebook <laughs> you've like got this thing really pretty. It's oh, white. It's yeah. clean. It's simple. Mm -hmm. It's very up to date. I was like, why is that? I mean, all almost all campers. I mean, they're kind of getting a clue now. Now mm -hmm. they're kind of going like light grays and whites and things, but. All campers were all dark brown, and I'm like, this is so depressing. I can't live in this for. At first, we thought it was going to be six months. Turned into a year and a half. So, wow. yeah. Anyway, but it was a great adventure. It, it just showed me how little we really need. You know, that's true. As Americans, we've got all this stuff. Oh yeah. And you know, we're paying to store our stuff. And really, mm -hmm. if we just throw, give it away, sell it throw it away like mm -hmm. it probably in the long run be a lot easier oh yeah but you know i've got a barn and it's too small you oh, know and yeah. i'm thinking i'm going to build another barn for this i'm like the more i've got the more i got a maintenance the more mm -hmm. i've got to take care of. i really don't need this mm -hmm. probably be better if there's a better way to help others mm -hmm. and so that's kind of what i wanted to lean, lean into with you melissa is i've watched you grow your business mm -hmm. and you know from ground up You've given, you've helped others, you've mentored young girls, like even my daughters, like mm -hmm. you stepped in, even without me, like, oh, Melissa, please help me. He's like offering, hey, if there's anything I can do to help those young girls oh, yeah. dealing with, you know, teenage yeah. issues, oh, yeah. let me help. Yeah. And, and you did, you stepped up. And well, they're um, awesome girls. She did a good job. Well, I, I, we did our best, you yeah. know, and they're kids and yeah. we love them and they're, they're great. I've got two new I've got a grandson, I and I just got the granddaughter home oh, yesterday, oh so we're all excited, and, and God's been good to us, just blessed us with with more. And you know, at yeah. first I was like, oh no, <laughs> but at the end of it, I see it's a blessing, oh, like yeah. it's it's a good thing. And, oh, yeah. um, so, with that, I, I know you're very go-oriented. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit how you, I mean, I know how you built it because I've seen you work. I've been on the <laughs> other side of your follow-up and your service. Like, it's amazing. But if you kind of tell the viewers how you started out, like, 
I want people to know, like, if anybody, like, if I can do something like this, anybody can. Like, I, I didn't get A's in high school. I barely graduated, and, and somehow I made it. <laughs> and so, like, it ain't like we came from, like, big families. It was just, you know, I had these businesses, and they handed them over. How did you do it? Hmm, interesting. Well, I didn't intentionally go into sales. Um, how I got introduced to Mary Kay was a friend of mine from church asked me to have a Mary Kay party for her. At the time, I was very busy. I was going to school full-time, 17 hours a week, working a full-time job as a restaurant manager, um, you know, married with, uh, I think it was around seven or eight, and involved in every sport, every activity, Boy Scouts. Not that we pushed him to do any of it. He was just a He's go-getter, go. and he wanted to be a part of anything he could be a part of. So, so yeah, um, she asked me to have this party, and I thought, oh, <laughs> can't I just buy something from here. <laughs> I was like it's the hardest easier. one. Oh my gosh. Just let me give you money and you go away. Anyway. So she's like, I really need your help. I'm working on a really big goal and I'm a sucker for anybody that has a goal. So I agreed and, um, she came over and I was not really looking forward to it because honestly, you know, when you're super busy, you don't always have time for a social life or, friends, what have you. And, you know, I don't like to play a game that I can't win. And my biggest Thank fear, you. <laughs> right? Right. I'm not playing if I can't no, win. No, if I have a chance here, I don't even want to like step into the arena. So anyway, um, I thought, man, I'm going to like invite these people because I don't ever come to any of their parties. Nobody's going to show up. Anyway, four people by the grace of God showed up. And in two hours, we had a blast. And I saw these women like start out like very kind of almost nervous and a little uptight. And by the end, they were laughing. They let their hair down, literally, and just we had a blast. And I watched them, you know, buy over $400 worth of skincare and cosmetics. And at the end, even though, you know, my mom and daddy taught me not to ask people about how much they make, you know, I'm kind of a rule breaker. So I asked her, <laughs> how much of that money do you get to keep? And she said, well, we make 50% of everything we sell. And I'm like, 50%? That's amazing. So I can do that math. I was never good at math, but I could do it's half. It's easy, yeah. Yeah. So she made $200 in two hours. That was $100 an hour, and I was making like $9 an hour right. at the time. So I thought, wow, that's, that's pretty awesome. I still didn't really think it was for me, but she invited me to come to a company event, and she offered me a free gift, and I can be bought. So I went for the free gift and literally had no intention, even told her. She picked me up, very smart, because, you know, if you want somebody to do something, go pick them up. Don't give them an opportunity right. to back out. So she came and picked me up all the way there. I said, now, if you're trying to recruit me, this is not going to happen. I, I'm far too busy. There's just no way I could fit one more thing into my life. And so she's like, okay. <laughs> and she's driving her pink Cadillac, you know, with me in it. So um, by the end of the event, I wanted what these women had. And you know, you've been to events, you know, events change you. Yeah. Because what it does is it broadens your vision. I mean, mm -hmm. you might have had, you know, an eight by ten vision and thought it was a pretty big vision. But when you go and you hear, you know, experiences and journeys of people that have done amazing things that have overcome obstacles and breaking belief barriers, it changes you. Well, and one I had a mentor tell me, he said, if you find an area that you're uncomfortable in mm -hmm. or you're resisting, mm -hmm. that's your area for growth. Yes. And absolutely. you were kind of doing that, right? Yeah. Like the whole way there, like feet planted. I'm oh, not going to yeah. Be a, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So I know just from personal experience, too, that when someone says no, I, then just a lot of time it just means either they need more information or next opportunity. Right. So, anyway, um, yeah, by the end, they kind of did like a old-fashioned Southern Baptist altar call, and I grew up Baptist, and, you know, they gave the invitation, and I came Here down, and I'm like, oh, my God, what am I doing? My husband's going to kill me. Anyway, so I went home. He did not kill me, thankfully. Um, so I, I told him what I'd done, and he was like, oh, I think you'd probably be really good at it. And I'm like, what? You're not bad? So he was very supportive, and um, so... I told her up front, I was like, no, don't expect big things from me because right now my main priority is, you know, school. I, I My big plan was, I knew I wanted to own my own business. My big plan was I was going to try to start a restaurant. Thank, thank God he thank had God. a, thank God that, <laughs> that Mary Kay intervened and yeah, God had a way better plan than mine. So anyway, um, 
Because I'm sure we would have lost our shirt. I mean, you have to be able to lose big money to be able that's to a, start a restaurant. That's a tough deal. That's it is a total twenty four seven. Oh man, and I, my heart went out to everybody that owned restaurants during COVID oh, too. I'm like, oh my gosh, man. I mean, you you think I have a whole different lens for those people. Um, so two months in, I mean, she's like, fine, no, no, just have fun. You know, more fun you have, the more money you make. Is what she always said. She was very bubbly and very fun, and. Um, it's like, okay, well, I can do that. So, but she said, one thing, just one request I have of you is, you know, come to your meetings, you know, come to your meetings, get plugged in. You know, no one expects anything from you. Just show up. Those who show up, go up. And so I always had that, you know, in my head. And so I went and I, it was like, you know, by osmosis, you know, it just, you know, many people get into Mary Kay, but it's when Mary Kay gets into you yeah. or what are, whatever chosen field you're in mm -hmm. that you, that you will more than likely take it to the next level. You know, a lot of people will step in and it's too hot and they jump back right. out really quick because, you know, it's, it, it's uncomfortable. It gets uncomfortable. <laughs> That's right. So I think it helped growing up on a farm that, mm -hmm. you know, you had to embrace discomfort, you know, pretty much every day. You know, you got out of that warm, cozy bed and got outside in your rubber boots and breaking ice in the winter and, you know, for the cattle to be able to. So you just you didn't have a choice, yeah. you know. So anyway, um, but yeah, within two months of just kind of flirting with Mary Kay, I replaced my income at the restaurant. Wow. And after one really, really hard night, because unfortunately, you know, restaurants at attract either young people that don't really maybe care so much about, you know, the big goal of the restaurant or the bottom line or whatever. They're just there to collect a paycheck sure. or it's people who can't find any other job because right. of their poor life choices. So there was a lot of that. And it was just as a restaurant manager, I mean, just managing people who don't really care. Yeah. Um, it was, it was rough. And just one particular night I came home in tears yet again. And my husband was like, just quit, just quit do Mary Kay until you go through school or finish school and then decide what you want to do. I said, okay. So with his blessing, I quit my job and we really couldn't afford it. I mean, he was a police officer for right. Harrison County, mm -hmm. you know, not making very much money. And I definitely was not making very much money. And we had a load of debt. You know, we were over $50,000 in debt. And so it wasn't like it was a flippant, easy decision to make, but you know, I think that little big step Mm -hmm. You know, burning my ship, you know, behind me really just didn't give me any other any choice. Any other choice, yes. yeah. Yeah, so um, I, you know, I showed up. I was just like, okay, just give me the plan. Tell me what I need to do, and I'll do it. And so I was a good student. I just, you know, did what they showed me to do, which is a lot of relationship building and mm -hmm. being a product of the product. You know, you wouldn't go to a dentist with no teeth. Right. You know what I'm right. So, if he can't take care of his teeth, he's probably not he's taking not care of yours. It, right. Exactly. So um just really learned a lot about the product and just really was listening for the need and, you know, just, you know, really wanted to help women to be them best their best selves. And so anyway, after I quit my job, um four months later, we earned our first car. So six months from the time we got started, we had a car and that was when it really got real for me because we sold at my mentors suggestion she said sell your other car you know because you do have to maintain your production levels to keep driving that free car they're not it's not going to just ooh, sit back right. and do nothing and they let you drive a free car so i did i sold my other car another burn my ship moment mm -hmm. and um so and for those of you that don't know the story do you know the story behind the burn the ship mm -hmm. so there was a general that took his um his men into battle and they landed upon the shore. They went in, they started to lose, you know, taking a lot of casualties. And so they started retreating back, retreat, retreat was the call. And they all got back on the ship and they sailed away. So the next week or so he regrouped, refreshed the troops, came back in again, you know, went into battle. As soon as he stepped foot off the boat and the men went into battle, he burned the ship. So they didn't have a choice. No other option. No other option. So they, they had and they won. So anyway, I don't know if it's a true story or fictional, but it's well, been a good. It makes a lot of sense. I did the same mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. I mean, I jumped out of Ford going, well, Lord, <laughs> I'm going to do my part. I'm going to quit. Yeah. You got the rest. Yeah. And of course, he showed up. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I had to do the same does. thing. You can't give yourself an alternative or you'll go back to it. That's you'll go right. to the easier 
choice yeah. when it gets tough. Yeah. You want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. You got to jump out of the boat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. So really the rest is history. And um, we've, I've had, oh my gosh, I've, I've probably missed more goals than I've hit, but you know, nobody talks about the miss. Right. Right. You know, they talk about the wins and it's just, it's made me a better person. It's just really grown me, you know, um, learning so much about, you know, human behavior and mm -hmm. personal growth and Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, climbing up that hierarchy to self-actualization. It's, it's a fun, um, and sometimes painful journey, but it's so worth it. Well, you know, in the past, as you know, you've you've talked to my ladies mm -hmm. in our real estate team just about yeah. wasn't about makeup. It was it was life and and mm -hmm. like how you've you know we've, we we grind to get to where we're at. It, it's it, you just don't show up and it happens. Mm -hmm. And you're, I can tell with your business, like you're giving back, like you're constantly giving back to people, trying to help them get get there as well. And I just love it. Like it. That's why I always love inviting you over to <laughs> for our group or yeah. or just my wife and your husband and I will all go to dinner. Like yeah. it's just good stuff. It's like I feel energized and positive when I'm around those type of people. So yeah. I want to be around those people more. But so how many years you've been doing this? 22 years. 22 years. Yeah, started when I was eight. Mm -hmm. What's your retirement go? <laughs> he totally didn't catch that. I got it. Anyway. I got it. I was going to comment a You're little gonna something. You're going to let that just smooth <laughs> let that roll slide on. for a minute. So you asked about my retirement? Yeah. What are you thinking? Um, gosh, I don't really ever want to retire. That's honestly, good. Honestly, you know. If you love doing something enough where you don't want to retire, you're pretty passionate about what oh, you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't say that was always the case, you know, but Mary Kay does have a, a great retirement program mm -hmm. um, for national sales directors. Um, so um, that retirement will happen when I turn 65. Um, so, but, you know, I... Oh, she got her 30 years. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah. So, um, but I see myself still being, you know, very involved either... As a business coach, um, I mean, because I'll, you know, I have an organization that I've built probably of around 2,000 people. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I, I'm not going to just step away and yeah, you know, you can't wash just, my hands right. of those people. <laughs> I'm, I'm still going to be, you know, involved in their lives in some way, shape, or form. So, but probably, you know, do some type of coaching. But we also, on our property, we bought 45 acres. We didn't intend on buying that many. <laughs> Uh, we were looking for like five to 10, five to 10 was always what we had said. But, you know, you, you bring your goal to God and he just supersizes mm -hmm. it sometimes. So, which we love it. We're so glad that we have the 45 acres. I mean, we, you know, we, we hike on it, we play on it. And it was so funny. The, the property had been logged and we were back there, like, you know, stalking the property all the time. It was right behind our house anyway, but we were watching it when they were logging the property. And we went back and talked to these loggers and we told them, we were so excited, you know, we're going to be buying this property. And and this one guy, he was like, I wouldn't have this property if you gave it to me. It was just, all, it's all hills, hills yeah. and it's woods. And there's some part of it that, you know, is kind of untouchable. Just, you know, goes straight down a, a big ravine. But for our lifestyle, we mm -hmm. love that. We hike, we run those trails, we ride those trails, you know, so. Don gets his dozer we, out and makes more trails. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Yes, yes. You know, he's got his dozer and he just purchased a skid steer. So <sighs> his next goal venture um, is he works for UPS now, mm -hmm. um, does very well, um, and it's really not a bad job. It's, you know, he's a he drives a, a big truck for UPS. Mm -hmm. Um, he works like three days and then is home four days, which awesome. is not a bad gig and, you know, making six figures doing that, which is crazy and great, great benefits. But he is gone, mm -hmm. you know, and he would just love to, he's actually started to do forestry mulching and, um, and oh my gosh, he's a, I told him, I said, you know what? You're a forestry artist mm -hmm. because he he's already done several jobs, hasn't even advertised yet. He's like kind of hold, pulling the reins back because he's you know I, he'd probably be way he'd have to quit. Too busy, yeah. Yeah, and he and that is his goal. That is his goal. But you know we have certain financial goals sure. to have in place sure. before he you know makes Those that place. Leap. If it were me, I would just leap. I'm a I am a fire ready aim kind of girl. He is a ready aim. 
aim, aim. Recheck my sights. Yeah, yeah. exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you get the gun reference. So he, he's not burning. He's not going to burn the ship real quick. He's going to roll into this. Yeah, we make a good we make a good complementary pair because I'll nudge him out of his comfort zone and then he kind of levels me Burns out. So yeah. yeah, yeah, that's Holly and I. Holly's real quick to. To, to move, to shake, my uh -huh. wife, Holly. And then I'm more like, well, I got to think about that. Uh huh. And then I think about it. I rethink about it. I think mm -hmm. about it too much. And mm -hmm. sometimes the opportunity's already gone before I think thought about wrong, it. Think wrong. So, yeah, that's mm -hmm. very true. So, um, sounds like once you do decide to slow down, you still want to help people mm -hmm. and do what you love, which I feel like is help people, helping mm -hmm. people and being in relationship business. Yes. Um, what would be three pieces of advice you would give young folks who maybe are thinking about being an entrepreneur, going on their own on doing something? What would you advise after looking back? What would you tell them? Um, first thing I would do is I would go buy the book, The Dream Giver by okay. Bruce Wilkinson. And I would read that book. All right. Um, because it talks about in the book how... Um, it's a, of course, it's a, a fictional book about a character named Nobody from the land of familiar. Oh. And, um, and so the dream giver visited him by leaving a feather on his windowsill. And um, he went, he was so excited. He showed his mom and dad who were sitting in front of their box watching TV. They call it the box. And uh, he, you know, came and told them about this exciting dream that the dream giver, you know, came and they're like, well, we're not surprised. You know, you you used to play that dream, you know, when you were a kid. So, you know, think back of what it was that you love to do. And, you know, also, I mean, if you can't remember, if you're having a hard time, remember, go and ask, you know, ask mm -hmm. your family that, you know, watched you grow and, you know, kind of saw what your, your bent was and, you know, your, your passions, your fledgling passions, what have you. And so, I mean, I wanted to be 20 million things, of course. So I went and asked my mom and she was like, <laughs> you can't do that. Melissa. My mom. Okay. So I don't know how appropriate this is to say, but she would call me a fart in a whirlwind. So anyway, because I, one day I wanted to be an actress and then the next day I want to do own a restaurant. And then this, I want, yeah, anyway, I was all over the place with all my goals and my ambitions. So. But when I went into doing what I'm doing, my mom said, you know, that actually makes perfect sense because that used to be something that you love to do and, you know, always wanted to be in charge and lead. You know, we, we lived, I was born in Louisville and um, had a subdivision, you know, full of kids. And so I was always, all right, everybody line up. We're going to play, you know, and my mom was like, she's going to be in charge of something, not <laughs> sure what, I don't know if she's going military, which it's kids going to do anyway. And then, um, my parents got divorced and we moved to Southern Indiana and I ended up growing up in Laconia mm -hmm. and uh, we went from a cul-de-sac to a 500 acre farm and best thing that ever happened to me. So grateful for that, that, you know, way of growing up. And so anyway, even though I kind of hated it at first, um, so anyway, um, but yeah, um, so, you know, think about those things, you know, what was it that you, that you love to do? I mean, what, you know, we've all heard, you know, if you find something that you love to do, whether you got paid to do it or not, you'll probably make a lot of money doing it. Someday. Right. Um, so it was a long time. I mean, I think I was like 26 before I got into Mary Kay and kind of started going down that, that journey. Um, but, you know, another thing is I would just say, be hungry and be humble. Yeah. You know, there are no free rides. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if there is something that you're kind of interested in, go and seek someone out that has done that and has done well. And, yeah. you know, I wouldn't get them like when they're in the hustle and grind stage, I would like, you know, where they've kind of, they've made it. They've been there, done that. That that would be a good time to go and talk to those people because they'd probably have more time and energy to give to you. So that's yeah. probably what I would say. I like it. That yeah. was good advice. And just listening to you talk and just thinking about like entrepreneurs, yeah. that usually is the person that's that's got four, you know, five, six irons in the fire at one time and oh, absolutely. can't really figure out exactly which one to pull out. Like that's mm -hmm. the way I was. I, I thought I was going to work oh, at I Ford Motor story. Company. 
for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And then when I got a Ford Motor Company, I was like, this is driving me nuts. Yeah. Because I'm focused on one nut, one boat, you know. Literally. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, eh, eh, do it again. Yeah. Eh, eh, do it again so many times. You and I so was, much more. Exactly. And I was, my mind was going crazy. I could do this. I could do that. Mm-hmm. And I look back and I remember writing Jeremy Bohannon letters while he was in the military. And I was 18 years old. And I said, I think I'm going to get into real estate. And I forgot about that mm-hmm. until his dad had given me a piece passed. Well, his dad had given me some letters where we would correspond and I, and I wrote that down. And I didn't get into real estate till I was 28, 29 mm-hmm. years old. Kind of like yeah. you finally figured out what I thought I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And it just become real. Like it was just, just like you said, God gives you an opportunity, but you got to put in the time. You mm-hmm. got to put in the work. And it just, uh, it excites me to see the young entrepreneurs out there. And right. there's so many different platforms for them now. I mean, oh, there's yeah. all this online stuff. Oh, you know, it used to be go out, put your gloves on, work harder. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just things are changing. And these kids are so bright. They're mm-hmm. coming out of school so bright with this stuff. I don't understand half of it. But <laughs> I think the fundamentals are the same. Right. And so it is. get a coach, get somebody, like you said, that, you know, don't go learn how to play basketball from the high school, junior high guy. Go find Michael Jordan. Say what he's, you know, mm-hmm. what, how did you do it? What mm-hmm. did you do? Oh yeah. And so I totally agree with that. Um, well, there's also, I'll add, I mean, if in the meantime, I mean, if you're having a hard time or you can't think about who that person would be, you know, gosh, there's so, there's such a wealth of information and resources on YouTube. YouTube. And, you know, my gosh, almost everything that I have learned, you know, as far as social media or techie, anything, it has been from watching YouTube videos. I'm not a Googler. Mm-hmm. I don't like to Google and read. Show me, you know, the video. show yeah. me the video and I'll pause it. I'll do it. And I'll go back and play. And then, I'll, yeah. So that's how I learned. But I mean, many of my mentors don't even know my name. You know, they've mentored me from afar from either the books I've read or mm-hmm. the videos or, you know, back in the day, I'll age myself, the cassette tapes yeah. I listen to, you know. I got a few. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I've got a box of CDs in my storage and I'm like, what am I going to do with these? So, They'll come, anyway. up. They'll come in handy someday. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Well, um, Melissa, I really appreciate you coming in and spending absolutely. your valuable time with us. Oh, um, you. Do you want to let know that? Our viewers know how to get a hold of you if they're interested in maybe doing some Mary Kay business or something. Well, they can find me on Facebook. They can search Melissa A. Mays, M-A-Y-S. Melissa spelled just the, I say normal. It's yeah, I've spelled it two or three different ways depending <laughs> on who I'm dealing with. M-E-L-I-S-S-A. All right. Um, but yeah, they can they can reach out through Facebook. And um, I always say, you know, my, a lot of the younger generation calls it Facebook stalking. I say, hey, it's like doing your... You know, you're collecting intel. Your you know due what diligence. I mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so if I'm wanting to, you know, if I'm going to meet with someone, that's the first thing I do is I go and I check them out on mm-hmm. Facebook. So that is another piece that I would, yeah. a piece of advice that I would give to the younger generation is, you know, be very, very careful of the things that you're posting because that is literally, it is like your resume that will yes. follow you for the rest of your life. Because even though you delete it, it's still out there. It's and the first place that the attorneys and the prosecutors go. Oh, live. man. You know, yeah. it's like, who is this guy? Oh, sure. So, yeah, just let it be a reflection. It's like your little glass house, you know, and you want people to see something positive. Right. And um, one thing that I'll share, you had, you had asked a question and my brain went to a different direction. But I remember a mentor sharing with me one time, there's four ways to be successful when you were asking me the piece of advice that I would give someone. Four ways to be wealthy. This okay. is what this is what she told me. First way is you inherit it because okay. your family's wealthy. Okay. Well, that was not an option for me. Did, couldn't <laughs> no, check that box. Nope. Nope. Second is you marry into it. Well, again, couldn't that was that box. nope. That was not an option for me either. My husband was my husband the year he switched over to UPS, he paid out in taxes what his annual salary <laughs> was as a police well, officer. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the third way is you own a business and the fourth way is you're in sales. Those are the four fastest ways. They're not the only ways, but the four fastest ways of becoming wealthy. And so, yeah, that's so what you did. sales is a wonderful, even if it's not the thing that you do forever. I think every person I have said this, I, I and I believe it to be true, not because it's just benefiting me in some way. But I think every young woman should come into Mary Kay for at least a year because of the experience that she would gain. And she could literally go anywhere, anywhere. with that experience 
it is like a PhD in human behavior and psychology and business and life skills. Mm -hmm. You know, I should have mentioned that one first, because honestly, that is the most important thing that I have taken away from that, you know, because and how you run your life is how you run your business. If you're hot mess express in your personal (laughs) life. This is be going to carry over that way too. So anyway, but yeah, it has been just amazing because what I found myself um, was I was surrounded by a bunch of Proverbs 31 women mm-hmm. and even more so than my church. I mean, my church, yeah. it's like that, you know, maybe a couple day mentoring, but this was just like, you're living it. I'm living this. I, it's total immersification and just, you know, and they're in my head every day with, you know, the training and, And so best thing ever, best thing ever. So that would be another piece of advice for, for young ladies. And there are men that do it too, but they are the minority. Um, They are, um, yeah, they get a lot of attention when they do it and they do really well. But again, they are the minority. Huh? It would be a little unique. Yeah. Especially in our area. Absolutely. uh, No, I knew, you know, the, you know, I've known you for a long time Uh and always been an awesome person, but when you did the first, um, kind of like coaching session with my group over COVID. We did yeah, it on Zoom. Yeah. Uh-huh. I was blown away oh, by you. your wealth of knowledge. And the, you can definitely tell you've been plugged into some good stuff. Mm-hmm. Like it was just coming out of you natural. Yeah. And you were just you know, quoting it. You weren't reading off anything. So mm-hmm. I would agree. Like young ladies, oh, yeah. if you want to be self-confident, you know, have good self-confidence, yes. learn some, some very good life skills, I yes. would. I would get involved in Mary oh, Kay yeah. because... Proof sitting right in front of me. Oh, yeah. So, well, and the same thing could be said for real estate. I did. I got with a coach mm-hmm. and started, you know, reading books they told me to read Absolutely. and started, you know, what you, you get what you focus on. Uh-huh. So focus on good stuff. That's it. And, uh, it and worked I think out we were good. at a good age when we started because honestly, life, you know, you've you kind of done to, life a little bit. Yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, the younger people, they, you know, they hadn't really been beat up enough. Right. Yet. You know, right. you, you got to really them. develop some grit. <laughs> You definitely have to develop some grit because it's, you know, none of those things are going to be easy. It's going to be tough. Yeah. And and you won't see the reward for years, maybe. Mm-hmm. But you might see it, you know, inside, in your heart the first right. day. And right. you'll kind of know it. Like, yeah, I've had many days I'm ready to give up. Oh, yeah. But you just pull your boots back on and, and, and read a good book and get powered back up. That's do a little it. prayer and go after it again. And it. it'll happen. Mm-hmm. So I call that the burn the starter kit day. Yeah. Yeah. Just want to like <laughs> roll that Mary Kay starter kit out in the road, set it fire, run over it with your big redneck pickup truck. And I did get that. I love that. Let's truck. go. <laughs> all that. Like, yeah. Finally, I got what I wanted when I was 20 at 50. Love it. <laughs> My friends call me redneck Barbie because I get all yes. really fied, but at home I'm denim and mud and rubber boots. Just farm girl. I'm just country a girl. girl. That's it. Yep. No, that's what makes you so comfortable, I think. Like, you, you can be this, that, but you're always yourself. Yeah. And it's good stuff to, well, to see you. people operate that way. Well, if like, you spot it, you got it. There you go. You got it, too. Yeah. Well, we're uh, we're working on it, and yeah. we're growing it. So yeah. um, I just really appreciate you coming in and, and sharing yeah, your experience with us. And um, like I say, girls, <laughs> get a hold of this lady. Uh, she's good all around and actually has some good makeup, too. Yeah. So appreciate you coming in and uh, we'll kind of watch from a distance and see you get that. Uh, I notice you're driving a white Escalade right now. That's right. Do you That's think, right. is there a pink one on in, in the vision? Absolutely. So Mary Kay does offer a car program and you can either take the car or the cash. And I've taken the car for 21 years. I was going to say, you're always in pink when I see you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been driving a pink car forever. And so the last time I just wanted to do something different. So I took the thousand dollars a month and, but I lost the insurance option. So I am paying my own insurance. I thought, what is this about? This is weird. What is this? This is so strange. I got to pay this? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I've got a car payment now. But so I get that reimbursement, you know. So anyway, Mary Kay's basically buying that car. So my plan is that will that vehicle I will gift to my husband when I earn the pink Escalade, which is what national sales directors get, and that is my next step. So I can't wait to see it because I know it's going to happen. Uh, yes, sir, it It'll sure happen. will. Yep, absolutely. Awesome. Well, you folks that live around Southern Indiana, you see a pink Escalade running around, you'll know who it is. That'll be me, yep. Mrs. Mays. <laughs> For more local real estate information, please like and subscribe to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel.